All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. We have an away game in Arizona. I'm co-hosted by Juwan Hughes, also known as Juju Hughes, also my former roommate, current Arizona Cardinal. Today on the pod, we have Josh Woods. First we gonna rock, then we gonna fall, then we let it pop, don't let it go. <laughs> from the Arizona Cardinals. You guys go way back from Detroit. Ju, why don't you go ahead and uh, talk to me about how you and Josh met? How me and Josh met, man, that's a good question, uh, how we started off. I don't know, but honestly, I know I can say, from the moment I got out there in Detroit, <laughs> Woods was definitely one of the first people, I could say, we was we was hanging out, we was yeah, kicking it, we definitely was, sure. uh, his room was right next to mine in the hotel, I, that might have that might have got it started, that might have got it started, us being right next to each other in the hotel room, and mm. from there, you know, just, you know, great minds think alike, we kind of linked up, started hanging out. Just doing fun things together. Doing just, fun things together. Still with you guys, know. dude, you know. you know. Guys being dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out with the exactly. bros. Exactly. <laughs> That's all it was, you know. You man, good dudes. So good dudes, no good dudes. And just went from there, you know. Started hanging out, kicking it. Led us here. A year later, now we're here in Arizona. Don't bring the juice. <laughs> I'll bring the juice, man. Look, <laughs> bring the juice. look where life takes you, man. Look yeah. at it. So, Josh, yeah. would you would you say that's a pretty accurate uh, story? It's there? pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, I think. Um, Any details he missed? You think? Yeah. Um, mm. I noticed that he always had a toothpick. Let's t- you, let's. Do you want to just get the? Yeah, let's, 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 let's just get into it. Let's get it. Let's get into the toothpick uh, yeah, a little bit. The, you know. So, so. Uh, he had a toothpick, and we were in the middle of working out, and. He pulls out a fresh one from his compression shorts waistband and throws it in mid-workout. And I see it and no one else is paying attention. I'm like, yo, that's the coolest motherfucker I've ever met in my life, bro. And he, like, I'm talking practice with a helmet on, toothpick. I just start, toothpick, what you doing later? And, you know, so we would just hang out, go grab food after workouts or whatever during, uh, was that camp? Or was that OTA? That was like OTA. It was like OTA, year. so we had plenty of time. And, yeah, you know, we just go sh- go to the clothing store. We both like clothes. We're in the fashion, definitely yep. both yep. in the fashion, fashion. So, yeah, we got to do a little stuff like that. Hang out, go to clothing stores. He put me on some spots out there for yeah. sure. Got me right. No, nah, my dad always has a toothpick. Like my dad will smoke a cigarette with a toothpick in the other side. Like <laughs> never- since knowing Juju, or he always had no. Since I've known the man, he's had a toothpick. I've never yeah. seen him without a toothpick. So with Ju- when I saw Juju did the same thing, I was like, it's got to be a good guy, you yeah. know? A toothpick created a friendship. Pretty much. That's awesome, though, man. Pretty much. Yeah. So, you know, originally, of course, as a the actual podcast host, Juju's doing a great job so far, by the way. Uh, you went to Maryland, mm-hmm. played DB. And then you get to the Bears, and now you're not a DB. They're asking you to become linebacker. Right. Talk to me about that whole – let's talk about the conversation. How'd that conversation go? Okay. So I had gotten hurt my <laughs> – I had gotten hurt my senior year. Uh, end of – I think I missed, like, the last two games. I broke my first rib. So I'm done. Career's over. But I meet this scout in the building that goes, like, hey – You've been having a good year. Like, it's not over. Because I was ready. I was just like, dang. Like, you were ready to be like, I'm done playing football? Well, yeah. I hadn't had a great career up until senior year. And then senior year was cut short. So I was like, wow, this is, prob- this is not a likely league story, you know? Um, and so while I was injured, I couldn't work out or anything. Could, couldn't do anything. Wasn't clear. So I was taking, like, creatine, still taking my super greens and everything. And next thing I know, once I was working out, preparing for like pro day and stuff. I hopped on the scale, I was like 220. I was like, damn, I got too big, right? There there aren't too many 220 safeties anymore. Yeah. So I had cut that down and I probably weighed in at 212-ish for a pro day. And by the time we got to rookie mini camp, I was back up to like 217. Mm. And the entire time I'm there, I mean, and I'm, I'm making myself known, right? I was just, a, I just had an invitation. When I'm talking, I'm, Making, you know, making adjustments this and the third. So I'm turning heads, but the DB coach just keeps saying, he said, you're a big ass safety. <laughs> you are a big ass safety. And he kept saying it so that we practiced two full days. And after the second day, they tell me get on the scale after practice. Mm. Scale still reads 215. This is after, after pra- practice. practice yeah. Yeah, you should have lost a couple pounds. <laughs> they said, mm. Mm. You ever played in the box? And I was like, no, not really, no. But they sent, they sent me home that day 
going into the third day of mini camp and they were like hey we're gonna try to you know put you in the box see how see how you move whatever we don't care that you don't know anything about linebacker so obviously didn't get signed right then and there they sent me home i thought thought it was over again i called my mom said ma i gave it my all they didn't sign me <laughs> and um uh, my agent i'm crying on the phone I, I kid you not crying on the phone on the back of the bus on my way to the airport he's like dude they didn't they didn't tell you anything i was like no said, bro, they're inviting you back for vet mini camp. They just want you to gain weight. And I had been eating salads the last three years because I know, like I said, yeah. I was too heavy. So right. I was like, I get to eat again. So, <laughs> bro, I promise you, I was eating steak, mashed potatoes, and broccoli every day for five weeks. And I came back at 232 and got my contract. Wow. Yeah. So you get, it was the first time, because you, again, you said you were a heavier safety. You get, the whole script got flipped from, shit, I'm washing my weight, eating salads, really portion controlling to let the big dog eat, baby. Yeah. And you and got I, to get you. Yeah, so I was working with this guy, Coach Keith, out in Maryland. And um, I called him after I get the green, like, to start. Yeah, I said, because he used to take us to lunch every day, but he would be on me, like, no, you, you can only get a salad. <laughs> you know, that type of talk. Yeah. And I said, Coach Keith, it's on, baby. Steak. <laughs> and Coach Keith, Coach Keith, Coach Keith actually bought that steak every day for lunch. Wow. Those five weeks training, yeah. going into rookie mini camp. That's a pretty cool relationship. Though. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. <clears throat> but, yeah, the transition to linebacker obviously was not easy at no. this level. Um, still learning a lot of stuff about it, but uh, it's been great. Like, I, I miss safety, but safety wasn't paying the bills. So yeah. right. Let's talk about that a little bit, like that transition from – Safety the linebacker. Was like, you know, I play safety. You know, we do some things together. I see what you guys have to do compared to what we have to do as safeties. But, like, talk about that full transition of having to be, like, a full-time linebacker. You're in that box. You're making calls. Like The first time it actually hit me was, so I was a box safety at Maryland, even still. So, like, Savage would play the post, mm -hmm. and I would come down when we were playing cover three. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the run fit, you're uncounted. Yeah. Every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah, I go out there <laughs> with the Bears against the Texans. <clears throat> Sorry. And it's really garbage time at this point, right? Yeah. But uh, Deshaun looks right at me, and he goes, 55's the mic. I said, bro, they see me? How is this about to go? Yeah. Legit. And, um, I mean, the 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 – the thing about safety is that you can see everything yeah. and linebacker, you have to feel it. Feel it. And like, yeah. it's instinctual, but if you've never done it, then you don't have those instincts, right? right? Mm -hmm. So everything just happens that much quicker. You're at five yards, not 12, you know? Um, things are happening behind, things are whizzing in front of you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Safety is just like, I feel like every position has a very unique perspective of the game. Sure. And so you have to refocus your eyes, rewire your brain to see different things. Yeah, right. no, definitely. And I just, definitely had some good linebackers to learn from, though, with Danny T and Roquan in Chicago my first two years. Uh, like yeah. A Super Bowl champ and the uh, newly highest paid linebacker. defensive linebacker. Yeah, some great guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? The defensive behind. player in the history of the NFL. So yeah. some good guys to be behind for sure. Yeah. Not out, of, out of all of that, what, what would you say was the hardest thing to adjust to? Obviously, you said you're closer to the ball. You got to feel it out. Reading but, a box. Yeah. So I think my safety back, my DB background definitely helps me with coverages. I don't struggle understanding how those pieces fit together. The hardest thing for me was guard pull running back that way you know what i mean just everything happening so fast in front of you and you're so close to it right. that reading the box in the run game was so much harder at the linebacker position for me yeah. i didn't like i didn't know any of that stuff like you think you know football until you get to the league yeah. well but also i mean to get dropped in a professional sport arguably the hardest league in the world in in, in the professional sport category and getting switched positions, that's a, that doesn't, I mean, how many times does that happen a year? Very, yeah. very, often, very few, yeah. very few. You don't get to this point and then get that's a new position. That's what I'm position. saying. Like, yeah, you <laughs> maybe figure it out on the way right, in right, or right, something. That's what I'm saying. Like, maybe you're a sophomore tight end in college and they, you know, you're getting a little well, big. I was a receiver you, in high school. So I did, I, I, I was playing corner initially at Maryland oh, wow. and then got switched to safety midway wow. through. So like I've been a little everywhere. Bit. I've never gotten, you know, this is the longest I've played a position at this point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is the one that's been sticking for a minute. Now. Okay. <laughs> what, did, what would you say then, you know, you talked about the disadvantages you have had 
um, going from DB to linebacker. But because you play DB for a period of time, you have to have some some tools in your toolbox that are now an advantage essentially as a linebacker. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I can I, I can cover. I can cover just about anybody. Like it's not. I don't. I don't feel as though I'm. I'm a matchup problem. Right. Out there at all. Like I'm not. How people try to get a slot receiver on the mic, or you know, a, you get a quick back, like a scat back, or something like that. Like I definitely feel like my skill set allows for me to be able to do what a will linebacker does in this league, which is a lot of times eliminate those backs out of the backfield or a tight end. Um, I think that's probably the biggest. Uh, thing in my skill set that I have going for me. Yeah. Just coverage wise. No, definitely. See, what's crazy to me is you said the hardest thing you had to adjust to is probably reading that box. I would, I was just looking on the outside, looking in. You didn't, you wouldn't hate having to go be counted for with them big ass linemen all day, every day. <laughs> like, that would be like, you know, as a safety, I love it. Like you said, we're not counted for. Right. So, like, if a lineman gets to me, somebody else should already made the play, made the tackle, if he even gets to me. So, you, like you're counting for the guard is like yeah I'm getting it's your up. assignment like, center turn that's, his, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's your that guy yeah so that's the part <laughs> of me like how's that like how does, that wouldn't be something I like, mean that's, but that's to, still kind of all the same thing like when I say it, yeah. yeah like that's all like that's all the same thing like I'm not necessarily talking about like fundamentals in but in the box like yeah that. I'm talking about Just legitimately the reading the box like. Okay, am I in a 30 here or am I in a 10? Am yeah. I in a loose 40? Like, ah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, cool, these types of things because those little adjustments, like, literally one step to the right or one step to the left the wrong way, and you're out leveraged to the stretch yeah. or things like that, you know? And now, gaping hole. Yeah. Gaping hole. Yeah. Now, now it's one, two, three, read my key. Oh, the running back broke. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's right no. there. Yeah. So, can't, ha but in that linebacker, like, you really can't mess up. Yeah. That's the thing, like you gotta kinda be perfect. Like it's mm -hmm. legit quarterback at my like in my opinion, it's quarterback of the defense. Yeah. Gotta know what's going on behind you, gotta know what's going on in front of you, gotta fix people. Like it's a lot. Okay. Me wearing the green dot for the first time in Denver was so hard. Ooh, tell me about that. Green dot. Couldn't breathe. Uh, Talking too much. Could, no, that, all your that, elevation. That elevation. Elevation. Yeah. Elevation. Elevation. Serious. Yeah, couldn't breathe. And then I'm talking and nobody wants to echo the call. So that what's the call again? I, you got to repeat it five times. Yeah. Get in here tight. <laughs> Everybody get right here. Right? I'm going to say this one time and one time only. Yeah, I know. No, but it was, it, it was really cool, though. That was a cool experience for sure. Yeah. yeah. So going from, you know, the Bears took a, a chance on you as an undrafted free agent, and you get this transition of, you know, you don't know if you're even going to play. All, all of a sudden, you're a linebacker in the NFL. It seems like the, the Bears invested in your better future – the better they, they were looking into your future in the NFL, essentially. So when you get from the Bears to the Lions, was there any sense of, I hope they believe in me the way the Bears did, essentially? Or at that point, did you feel like you had enough proven NFL experience to where you had your niche and you did what you did well? Well, the way I got over here was pretty cool. I actually, the linebacker coach, when I got picked or I guess poached off the practice squad from the Bears, was my previous coach in Chicago the past two years. Oh, so he, so he, he was a first year guy in Detroit. Knew. Yeah. So he knew, and we were, we were having a conversation. He was telling me like, hey, you know, your role right now isn't necessarily gonna be linebacker. We're not asking you to come in and play linebacker. You know, we're asking you to come in, shift the culture, and like do what you do at, on special teams. Like right. we need you. And then wherever, you know, you may fall in rotationally at linebacker, that's up to you, but it's a brand new beginning. Just come in and be you. Yeah. That's what he told me. Okay. I got, I, I, big locker room guy? Ah, oh, yeah. Very big locker room energy. I can give him that. You know, he's the... The, you know the life of the party, the life of the locker room. It's, it's that you guys, you guys bring some get it. Get it. to the locker room for sure. I, I definitely know how to bring the juice if that's what if that's what you're asking. Hey, I, hey clip that. Make sure you yeah. clip that. <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch for that. I can vouch for that. For yeah, if there's another bring the juice candidate, he'd be a yeah. He's a, he's a front runner for that. I love that man. I mean, and like Juju was saying, you were the special teams captain for the for the Lions. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Lions seem again. I'm not in there. Lions seemed like a rowdy team to be a part of at, at the time you guys were a part of it. Yeah, it was yeah, definitely it was headed in a very in the right good direction. direction. Yeah, yeah, right, sure. Talk to you about you know that that coaching staff from the top down. You know, Dan Campbell seems like he's. Uh, I really Dan, enjoyed playing for Detroit. He he seems like he brings the juice, Dan Campbell. 
<laughs> he brings some, he brings his own little juice. He brings some juice. It's kind of quirky, yeah. right? But like at the same time, you can feel his passion, and I think right. that's what the guys feed off of more. Yeah, it's not necessarily like what he's saying sometimes because yeah. you'll leave a team meeting like, what, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, the, the same way the the world was introduced to Dan Campbell about biting kneecaps. Like, yeah. no, though, that was team meeting. Like that, we. Right. You, you would walk in, he would just show like a random video of a guy. What, what, was, what, was, what was the guy doing? He was like running from the police yeah, covered in mud. Some, yeah, it's so, like he showed this random video, had nothing to do with anything and said, all right, O and D, break it up. You're, you're, just, you're stuck with that so, O and D now. <laughs> so what did he? Some self-reflection time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, with all that being said, with all of the, the randomness, this, that, like, he really listened to the players. Right. Um, I felt like he definitely tried to have relationships with the guys. He definitely was a guy that gave the players ownership of the team um, in the sense that he knew that it needed to be player driven. So he yeah. wasn't really he wasn't going to chew you out. He wasn't going to this. Now, granted, I wasn't in offensive meetings and that's an offensive guy. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it wasn't about chewing people out. It wasn't about this. It was really just about let's get it right. Yeah. You know, let's get it right. And I, I think guys started to really buy in and trust what he was doing. And that hence the turnaround that, that the world saw from the Detroit Lions last year. Yeah. And just going off that, like, um, how do you feel like we're talking about that coaching staff? How does it feel? Cause I was over there with you, but how is it your viewpoint on playing for coaches that also played in the league? Like, I feel like that's that's a big part of it, too. Like, that's a big respect thing you could, you could get know what from you coaches. Like, yeah. yeah, you kind of have an understanding. Like, you've been here. You've done it a little bit. But what's your take on that? Like, that was a coaching staff full of coaches that yeah, all – former players. That were right. former players, all of them pretty much. Um, I think the coolest part about that was the level of expectation, mm -hmm. right? Like, some guy that's never played the sport, you know, mm -hmm. climbed the ladder one way or another – and then they just tell you, okay, no, this is how you do it, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't do it like this, then you're wrong, yeah. right? And there are some things that are just non-negotiables, technique-wise, whatever, but there are also some things where they were like, okay, well, how do you feel about this? How do you yeah. see this? How do right. you guys are the ones out there playing? Because they knew that adjustments have to be made. It's not played on paper, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Exactly. And I think that was one of the cooler things. Um, you know, Shep specifically was my coach. Shep was a linebacker, actually played for the Lions in 51, which yeah. was pretty cool. <laughs> wow. So, that, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. But, um, Shep, I mean, Shep shared the same passion that we did. And sometimes it would get misconstrued from the outside looking in because he's yelling, he's cussing people out, this, that, and the third. But that's just his love for the game. Same right. with AG, you mm -hmm. know. Like, these are guys that were really focused on – people playing their best ball, right? Right. Because if I'm playing my best, you're playing your best, you're playing your best, we're all playing better ball, yeah. you know? I think that was probably the coolest thing about it was them just mm -hmm. not being so, like, my way or the highway. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, I mean, I think all of us have been on a part of sports teams at some point in your life where when a coach cares about the players genuinely, it hits a little bit different. When he could relate to the players on a personal level, it hits a little bit different. And then, like you said, when they're open to being communicative, having an open line of communication, I guess you would say, of, hey, let's get this right, because this, this is the goal at hand, this is the objective, and you could work together to get there, you're just gonna automatically, you're just gonna play harder. You care more about the dude. For right. Sure. And in the pregame shit where he's coming around giving you a little slap on the freaking helmet, hey, let's get after it today. It means a little more from like a, a mentor, like almost like a like a father figure perspective versus, you know, a boss who's at your employer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you're just you're just, you're just here doing your job. Like, of course, you know, you guys are in the position where this is how you feed your family, this is how you're gonna make a living in your life, but you know, it's still the game of football to where it's like Dude, like you, it, it's a game of fucking emotion. Yeah, it is definitely it's yeah. a game of emotion. I feel like everybody plays it like at a better level when it's like that common respect and like understanding of like we have the same goal here. Like we're trying to get the same thing accomplished. It's not like you're my boss. Hey, do it like this. Do it as I say. It's more like a like we're a team here. Like we're all in this together. Like coach to player, player to coach. Like the teams I've been on, I feel like that like the best. Like, how we go about things, the best relationships within the building and stuff is, like, when it's that understanding of, like, oh, it's not just my way. Like you were saying, it's not just my way or the highway. It's, like, 
let's figure this out together. Like, what do you feel? What do I feel? Let's be on the same thing. Because at the end of the day, we have the same goal. We might think about it a little different, go about it a little different. But when you have that common understanding of, hey, we got the same goal at the end of the day. Like, I understand you're trying to get it done to feed your family. I'm trying to get it done to feed my family. You're able to take it way farther and bring the best out of each other and the best out of everybody in the building that way, I feel like. Um, yeah. Josh, who's a guy in your career so far and, and like you kind of mentioned it before the pod but who's a guy who's helped you become a pro you've had you've had these challenges you've had these these big hills you've had to climb who's a guy who's like hey he took you under the wing maybe in a dark place maybe whatever you want to call it but he he's got he's got you my first two years in chicago uh between roquan being just one of my best friends right, right. and that was more of like a a peer level, although he was like way better than me. And, and you know, in every aspect at that point of my game. Um, but Danny T was like, bro, let's come over to my house. Let's, I, my first interaction with Danny T, I shit you not, camp, training camp. I have a suit that I wanna wear for our, our first preseason game, right? right? Pre-game fit. Pre-game fit. Fitted. B big pre-game fit guy. Big, we'll big get into it. We'll get into it. But um, no, uh, so we're in camp. I don't have a car there. Like I don't, whatever. And I had asked him. I said, "Hey, Danny, like, could you take me around the corner to this this uh, cleaner spot?" And he just looked at me. He was like, "You want to take the Bentley?" I said, "Huh?" He said, "Do you want to take the Bentley?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just throws me the keys. And like that was the start of <clears throat> just like Danny, like really just absolutely looking out for me like yeah. from top to bottom like yo you want to come over my wife's cooking yo do you want to watch some film you want to come over play the game like just literally everything like his dogs like i allergic to dogs loved his dogs you know what i mean <laughs> like but legit <clears throat> i was part of the fact i would i i knew his gate coat yeah you know what i mean i knew yeah. his gate coat at yeah. the mansion yeah. so yeah. like it was I, I was there over yeah. there for sure and he he took me under his wing um and he just was he was Big bro, like that, yeah. that was that was big bro. He was a great linebacker too. <laughs> he was fire. Well, I mean, it's important because I just feel like you know people forget about the human being side of football mm -hmm. and even just professional sports in general. Like your your view, everyone's viewed as fucking assets or liabilities, objects. Are you even helping me win? Are you helping my fucking fantasy team win? Are you helping Mike buying your jersey at the shop? Like they don't give a shit about your feelings, your livelihood. But in reality, like. At that point, you're early in your career. How old are you? Your early 20s still. 21, 22. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So for you to have somebody to be like, hey, you want to come over and have a home-cooked meal? Like, Bill, that means a lot. It does. That means, shit, that means a lot at our stage in life right now. Man, right. still appreciate it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> still appreciate it. I think, yeah. And I think a lot of people have this viewpoint who don't get to sit down and have conversations like human beings with professional athletes. They don't understand it, but like... Dude, they're just normal fucking dudes. Yeah. Like, normal dudes sure, yeah. drinking Cor Kirkland organic coconut water or Topo Chico <laughs> or eating at places like Dervos Deli, which has a new sandwich called the Game Changer you all need to try. Uh, eating pistachios. Thank you. Shout out to the American Pistachio Growers. Or banking at FFB Bank, the premier bank of the valley. Things of that nature. But my point is, you like that? You like that? You see that? You, slid you see all, that? You, slid you see that? Real, yeah. We'll talk like about that. Manscaped. Manscaped, use code bring the juice for 20% off. Shave free shipping. <laughs> Shave take, care of your, take care of your stuff, boys. Yeah. Take care of it. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is the human being side, bro, it's, I mean, we're just chopping it up as freaking grown ass men. So even like those home cooked meals mean a lot. And especially at a, at a vulnerable point where you don't know what's going to happen if you're going to get cut or traded or an injury happens or shit even the other side where the pressure becomes even higher of hey maybe the, there's three dudes ahead of you what if they I've seen it three dudes go down to one fucking practice guess what you're starting this week motherfucker all of a sudden out of nowhere thrown in the fire been a part of that <laughs> on game day yeah, yeah. <laughs> on game day got thrown in the fire yeah tell me about it Roquan Torres Peck first quarter against Green Bay Packers week 17 win and we're in win and we're in we're at on the road or at home at home when and we're in. Cold? Was it cold? Was cold. Soldier Field. Good. January. Good. Yeah. Great game. Not for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
yeah, at, some point, on at some point, Aaron Rodgers figured it out. Like my, my first or second drives, I came back to the sideline, coach was like, yeah, hell yeah, good job. <laughs> Probably by, by that third or fourth drive, I think they figured out what, what the plan was. I, I feel like, and I tell people this story all the time, under center, Aaron Rodgers would just go, boop, 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 <laughs> That's our guy. We're going to mess with this guy the whole time. And, um, yeah, it wasn't a great show, and it wasn't my best show, and I wasn't as ready as I thought I was. Sure. But it was good. It was humbling. Good. Right? You know, because everybody everybody wants to play. Oh, man, I'm better than him. I can go out there. I can do yeah. this. I can do that. Do it. And I was like, oh, shit. And it was great that it was at the end of the year where it was one of those things like, I had that bad taste in my mouth all off season, ah. you know, fuel the fire. Yeah. So, right. So yeah. it made me go harder. It made me work. It made me, made me work to not be in that position ever again. So yeah, that was, that was my Green Bay Packers story. Yeah. I like that, <laughs> that thrown in the fire. Cause I've been there myself. I've been there myself. Jim, tell, that tell, about that, uh, tell me about your fire. Ah, my fire experience. I got a few for you. Um, let's just start Detroit. I go to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I was there for that one. <laughs> yeah, I, go, I had a few of them in Detroit. Uh, all, yeah, when I was getting to play, it was thrown in the fire moments, you know. Get, week one. Week one, Detroit last year. We're playing the Eagles. You know, we're just trying to start our season off right, trying to get it going. We're having a pretty good game with the Eagles. I want to say, going in the, I couldn't tell you the score going in the half, but it was a very close game mm. going in the half. Start, end of the third quarter, our starting safety, he gets ejected. Mm. Now, you could, you could probably vouch for this. When you're in a game, and, like, we're all professionals, but, like, you go into a game knowing the game plan, you know who the starters are, you know who's getting the reps. You know what your job is that day. If you're big on teams that day, if you're supposed to be the, the jammer, the gunner, whatever, you're the starting safety, you know your job going into that day. Own your role. Yeah, own your role. You know, do it to the best of your ability. You're three quarters in doing what you've been doing. <laughs> all of a sudden... Starting safety projected. You don't even know exactly who's up next. There's no set depth chart of, hey, you're the next one in a position like that. Right. It's just that moment the coach chooses, he, hey, you're up, big fella. Yeah. Go, in, this, go get him, Sonny. This is, this is last year. So the Eagles, obviously, as we all know, they had a pretty good team last year. Week one, we didn't know how good. They were all right. They, they, they were all right. You know, Super Bowl. And good enough to make it to the Super Bowl. Right. Not. But this is week one. We don't know how good the Eagles are. This is just the beginning of a new year. You don't know how good they are. You know, like he was saying, you want to play. You swear you're good enough to play. Everything, all that. You're thrown in the fire instantly. Just, oh, uh, they're going into the red zone. I'm thrown out there. Just middle of the drive. Safety ejected. They just had a big play. You're thrown out there. They got momentum. My first play out there, they do, they go right at me. They go right at me. My guy, we run a zero blitz. I'm one on one with the tight end, zero blitz. I slip. First play on the first play on the field. First play, I'm getting to play safety in Detroit. I slip. Ah, damn. <laughs> they got me. But it's like that just that's just like a little little taste of it. Like that full experience, like I st I hold myself to a high standard. I don't feel like I put my best foot forward like you said like it's a humbling experience like right damn was i as ready as i could have been like no. was i preparing like to be that starter and play all those snaps or was i just getting by getting through thinking I, i'm not gonna really be out there this game checking boxes Check, checking, checking boxes. boxes yeah no well, yeah we talk about that I'm, i was checking boxes at the time like right i wasn't preparing like hey you're gonna be out there like i prepared before in life now you're out there and everybody's depending on you like to make the play like you're out there like my guys are depending on me and I don't feel like at all I put my best foot forward so like I feel like that was a humbling experience to be thrown out there week one start the season off right there in the game like it's it's a close game like we have a chance to beat the Eagles still week one and I was part of that I still feel like I have parts of that of why we didn't end up beating the Eagles personally um but it's like you said it's just it's a humbling experience to be thrown in that fire out of nowhere and I, got, I followed that week one up of being thrown out there into the third quarter, played the third, fourth quarter, whatever, safety. Two weeks later, we're playing Minnesota Vikings. First drive, starting safety, blows his Achilles. I'm back out there again. <laughs> back in the fire. Back in the fire. Uh, Justin Jefferson, their whole receiver core, everybody out there, we're going against them just – Back in that fire now. Hey, you're back out there. What's up? It's you. Go out there and make a play. Like, I definitely feel like I played better that game, but still not to the best of my abilities or right. what the standard I hold myself to. So it's just like that. Being ready 
Um, stay prepared, man. When you, you, stay you ready, never know. Gotta get ready. Exactly. You never know. Don't just get by checking boxes, man. Don't just don't check the boxes like I did it. You know, I like that. I'm gonna use the checking boxes thing for a minute here, but yeah, you definitely don't want to just <laughs> check no boxes and get by, man. Because it, it definitely humbles you, though. And like he said, man, everybody swears I'm better than the next guy. I'm right. this. I'm that. I'm whatever, man. But you get thrown in that fire. And hey, it, it shows you fast. Like you make real eye contact. With the I, I'm, I'm trying to let them know something. Like and when they man. say adversity teaches a man, oh, uh, introduces man. a man to himself. It shows you a lot in yeah, the moments. Yeah. Fast. It shows you a lot in the moments, man. So, yeah, stay ready so you don't gotta get ready. If y'all, if I can tell y'all one thing, yeah. Those so those moments where you guys get thrown into this fire. You guys had you know you're, you're cruising. I don't want to say you're checking boxes. You guys said you're checking boxes. Checking boxes. You get thrown into this fire. Do you think that it helped you grow as an NFL player because of it, though? Do you think now you're like, hey, man, maybe I was bullshitting thinking I'm just going to be a gunner this game. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen now. Like, how, how much How like, how like much has it helped, though, realistically? I mean, first and foremost, like, it's a blessing to be able to live that and still be in the NFL. Right. right? Right. That's a blessing in itself. No, if that be the so, you. Right, thing. exactly. Because right, there are plenty it. of people who do get that one opportunity, aren't that's ready, it. and that's it. That's right? it. No, no. And um, graciously, gratefully, I guess, I don't have to live with that regret the rest of my life, right? Like, I still, I had another opportunity. Yeah. Right? Live and, another day. And like I said, it added fuel to the fire to that offseason yeah. for me to get better, be better, do better. And, um, really made me cherish and like like I said in, in, in the same way that I'm saying it's humbling it makes you like really understand how much of a blessing this is yeah and if I'm not doing my part how could I ask God to give me more or how could I ask my coach to give me more and I'm not even doing my part well, I'm preaching. checking boxes preaching. you know what I mean and the whole idea behind checking boxes to those who don't understand what that means yeah. is either you're getting better everybody can work out and get tired but are you doing it to get better? Everybody can click their iPad on just to watch film. But are you actually looking at tendencies? Are you actually taking yourself through these calls, making these adjustments? Getting something from it. Are you yeah. actually doing something to get better? Or are you, you doing it to say you did it? Yeah, yeah. You can't just go through the motions and this and, type of shit, bro. Right, exactly. And I don't think people understand. I don't think I understood yeah. the level of detail that goes into because... Juju versus the next safety or me versus the next linebacker. I mean, as humans, we can only run but so fast. Right. Yeah. You can only lift but so much weight. You know what yeah. I mean? That like they're they're, not, the, the, the difference, the, or like the, the difference between player to player is very minimal. Right. It's in technique and it's in the details. <laughs> and if you're not doing that part, you're never going to be great in this league. Right. And that's what, that's what that told me and that's what that showed me. That's how I grew, became more mature in this game and even though my role hasn't expanded on a team just yet, right? Like I've had little little showings of, okay, like you'll play a little bit of backer here or, you know, uh, now you're a captain, this, that, and the third. My role has grown, hmm. but not as much as I would like it to be at linebacker. Right. This year, I'm ready to kick the door down. Pfft, man, ready to kick the door down. Because I, 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 know, I know what needs to be done. Yeah. I know what has to happen. I loved everything he said. I, I love that too. That. I, I got me fired up. No, he got me fired up. Because that's, <laughs> hey, I feel like we're at the same. Did you feel like I uh, brought the juice? <laughs> you brought the juice. Brought the okay, juice. cool. Oh, thanks. Oh, piss is hot. You <laughs> was preaching to me. You know how you hear certain scriptures and you feel like that was me. No, you went off a little tangent yeah. there. I like that. I like that. That was damn good. That, that, that was meant for me. Yeah, I, I, that's where I'm at too. Just to retweet. On <laughs> retweet what he said. <laughs> retweet. <laughs> if I saw that tweet, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> retweet that one. That that was, one. That's where I'm at, man, for no, sure. You know what? You said it. And, you know, one thing I really try to do on Bring the Juice is get to be able to talk to these, these guys like yourselves. And, you know, you're grinding to, for your job, right? Your job is to play fucking linebacker in the NFL. There is a dude out there who's an accountant there's a dude out there who's a bank teller there's a dude out there who's starting uh you know a new business or a restaurant or whatever who's going through his own going through the motions he's checking boxes right now mm -hmm. bro you i i've done a lot of self-reflection in the last like two weeks bro i've been isolated in a fucking onion field thinking about am i doing everything i can to make bring the juice as maximized as it possibly could be in this day and time 
to where I'm growing and, and, and I'm and I'm getting I'm being the best version of myself I could possibly be at all times in all right. categories, right? But to understand that, hey, sometimes you need that little that little check, so little that little opportunity, that little situation for you to hey man, like I'll get thrown into the fire. I thought I was ready. I thought I was bulletproof. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry for the opportunity. Well, shit, you got your shot. Maybe you weren't as prepared as you thought you were. A little time to self-reflect, come back around, reevaluate, and then see what the fuck can I do to knock, knock doors down, like you said, Josh. Right. So I want to transition real quick into a Woodsy World. Mm-hmm. Woodsy World clothing brand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so uh yeah. first and foremost, get ready, right? Yeah, I'm I'm, re- I'm ready. Get ready cuz like I know you you know you've heard of Virgil, you know, you you know everybody thinks Kanye is this, you know, brilliant fashion designer. Nobody's seen my stuff yet, not even myself. So but is, I know I'm that good. I know I'm that good. I just This isn't this isn't like a t-shirt with a graphic on it. This is like your clothing. Yeah, this is me. This is me. Like I I I'm designing stuff drawing stuff out sketching it out getting you know it will have contain graphics at times it will this that mm-hmm. but it's very different it's going to be my style okay but i'm just going to figure out a way to market it where oh that's pretty cool yeah you know what i mean um it's it's definitely it's been in the works for a while it's in the works i like work on it and then i take a break because then i'm like i get an epiphany i'm like no that's not the direction i want right. to go i want to go here and um I'm really just slow playing it. I don't want to move it. too fast. Exactly. I want it to be it right. perfect when I do it. Mm-hmm. And um, I do suffer from a little bit of imposter syndrome. I, I was obviously just kidding with y'all. Like, shout out, rest in peace. Shout out to Virgil. Yay, yeah. if you see this, let me get a pair of Yeezys or, <laughs> or two. I don't know. Did we cancel Yay? I don't give a fuck. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't cancel Yay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, there's a bit of imposter syndrome there that kind of like, makes me want to make it perfect you know <laughs> <laughs> that was the deal cheers you, like, you sure <laughs> yeah everybody thought I think, we all, I think we all I think we all I think it was the way that it like, it like it eat, yeah, yeah it was I like it was anyways if it was me sorry, you would you'd be know. dead <laughs> you don't know <laughs> um but uh yeah so woodsy world it's, it's in the works. Right. It's been in the works. It'll probably continue to be in the works until offseason <laughs> over next year. But um, I definitely suffer from a bit of imposter syndrome in that world. Um, I don't know if you know what imposter syndrome is. Like Elaborate on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you use the definition? Like, yeah. Webster yeah. definition. <clears throat> so it's yeah. uh, originated in. Yeah. Uh, essentially, uh, I mean, when I first got to the NFL, I had imposter syndrome. Right? So like, when you, you ever get to a place and you're like, damn, like, should I really be here? These guys oh, are so much, like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, maybe I just snuck in through the back door, right? Yeah. right? And so um, the whole thing about imposter syndrome is like, it's low key a lack of like self-confidence, but it's really not necessarily the confidence of yourself it's like how big the thing is in front of you or around you that you're in right so like the fashion world is huge right how do i set myself apart do people even think i can dress you know what i mean like just things of that nature like how do i make something so cool that collar's gonna wear it right it's courtside at the game Mm -hmm. or you know what i mean like trying to get my stuff out there and um so I'm kind of battling that, trying to figure out a way to make it perfect, marketing and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Cause like my rollout, like when I do it, it's gotta hit hard. And I'm a person who only knows a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, that's it. So like, mm. it has to be perfect. It has to be good. And then it has to like be able to, okay, that drop's done. Next drop, next yeah. drop, next drop. I'll say this from, so when I started bringing the juice, I, the vision was a podcast it's kind of turned into a brand at this point. Mm-hmm. For sure, bro. Um, sure. One thing that I did, and like, you see the hats, you see the logo, like, I, I fuck with the trucker hats, and growing up a country boy who also played on a college football team where, you know, I was the only white boy wide receiver. I, my friends are of all backgrounds, colors, races, genders, whatever you want to call it. Everyone wore Bass Pro Shop hats, okay? Everyone. 
Juju, you ever owned a Bass Pro Shop hat in your life? I have. I got me a couple Bring the Juice hats. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Juju is the one fucking guy. I, I have a Bass Pro Shop. Okay. Hat. Thank you. So okay. my point is, I knew <laughs> off. Lie. I knew people wore Bass Pro Shop hats. I wanted to create my logo to where I legally didn't get in trouble, but I wanted it to be similar to Bass Pro Shop off of brand recognition. And then I want to make it as close to those as I possibly could. Basically saying, bring the juice instead of Bass Pro, mm -hmm. right? So I do that a little bit. People automatically, they fuck with it because they know they like Bass Pro. So I know they're going to like this. I get a couple different colors. I actually just got a couple new colors. I don't know if you saw those. Got a purple, got a yellow. It's hot. Yeah, it's like that subconscious recognition. It's just, so I got people now who'd be like, dude, I was in an airport and... I thought it was a Bass Pro Shop hat. It was a fucking, it was a bring the juice hat. But it's either dope. way, all I'm hearing in my eyes, even if you see a Bass Pro hat now, you're thinking about bring the juice at this point. You're double, you're double checking. That was a really bad double check visual. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ticking. Is that his tick? It scared me. I was to do, I was to like, you're doing the old double look though to see is that a is that a bring the juice hat or is that a Bass Pro hat? Even if it's a Bass Pro hat. I'm on your mind at this point. Rent so free. between rent free, rent free. So yes, I have this. But as the brands continued, bring the juice. It kind of like was one of our sayings on the football team. I kind of embraced it, made it my. Th I tried to hone in on it, and then it just kind of became who I'm. What I'm about, right? I'm, I was a high energy dude, and I still am. But couldn't tell. <laughs> hey, how would you know this? How, how would you know? <laughs> But yeah. at the same time, the juice box itself is kind of a hard little logo. So I got the juice box logo now, and I got the OG. I call this the OG at this point, and I got my juice box logo. So between the two, they've built off each other, and like I said, it's become a brand. Like mm -hmm. there's dudes who I've never met before who see their friend who I've had on the podcast who wear the hat, and they're ordering hats just because they fuck with the hat at this point, which has turned into relationships of I'm like. Hey, bro, like you, you know, you're playing, you're playing DB for the Falcons. Like, dude, all of a sudden you, yeah. First of all, buy your fucking hat. Trey Lance had to buy some fucking hats. I'm not sending anybody any free shit. You come on the pod, you get anything free you want. Thanks. But as soon as you're done, you got, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> back, sorry, bro. Back, back to consumer. <laughs> buy this. I can only do so much, man. I got, you know, we got margins. Bro. You got onions to, you got onions to plant. To a. Hey, different categories of life. <laughs> categories of life. We're on a time limit here. Okay, I'm sorry. What I'm saying is my only advice, and one thing that I love about what you're doing on the drops. So I don't have drops necessarily. I did a few drops, and they hit every time. But I, I just want people repping my shit, and I try to keep it reasonably priced too. This is 20 bucks online. You ask your mom for 20 bucks, you work a little side job, 20 bucks, that's reasonable to represent a brand, a company, whatever you want to call it. You start getting in the $80 range, mm -hmm. it's a luxury item at that point, which also does well, it's a different marketplace. But I think if I could go back, I would do drops, put it that way. Yeah. So I think you're on the right fucking path. You gotta be different, you gotta make it to where everyone can fuck with your shit. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not gonna tell you how to live your fucking life. Yeah. Last thing I'm gonna ask before I let Juju ask whatever he wants to ask because he's got a lot of he notes. He has over so there. many notes over there. Yeah, I love that. You're a traveling man. I saw you went to Italy recently. I saw you went to Egypt recently. I went to Italy for my honeymoon two weeks ago. What do you Again, congratulations on the Thank marriage. You. Thank you. Thank you. Great wedding. Yeah. Great. I actually haven't talked about it on the pod yet. No? No. Not at all? This is the first time? First time. Hey, I was oh, glad shit. to be there. Great, great wedding, man. Was, great yeah, wedding. Man. <laughs> Beautiful day. But um you, are you just enjoy travel? Did, what, what, tell me what drove these trips. So coming off the season, uh, I have a friend who I trained with coming out. Um, his name's Carlos. Shout out to Los. It's my boy. He um, didn't necessarily make it, you know, on the football on the football route. And he got into like he just put his passion into just like hustling. Right. So Good. like. He has Airbnbs. He has his own clothing line. He has, like, Los has his hand in everything, right? And um, he was telling me, one, he wants to get into business, right, with me on, you know, some Air Airbnb stuff. So if you're in Atlanta looking for a place to stay, mm. JNC Lux Rentals, you know, I got to slide mine in there, too. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. <laughs> Fair. But, um, no, in all seriousness, uh, 
I was talking to him and, you know, we're just talking about, you know, off-season plans. He's like, bro, miss you when you're coming home, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, bro, I told him, I said, this off-season is, like, we can't be just in the club every week. Or, like, we got to spend our money on. see the world. Yeah, got to, we, like, we need to spend our money on experiences. I'm trying to do some yes. cool shit. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I sat and I thought about what it was that I wanted to see. And the two things that popped up was the Coliseum because Gladiator's been my favorite movie since I remember watching movies. I took the tour. Well, s- second to Shrek. <laughs> I've already quoted Shrek. I've already it's quoted Shrek twice Shrek. today. Yeah, Shrek today. We've heard that. Um, but, you know, I definitely had to go to the Coliseum and pick the sand up and ask if they were entertained. Yeah. No one responded, but it was okay. They laughed a little bit, so I guess so. <laughs> um, and then I, I wanted to go see the pyramids. Yeah. And so, that's that's that was, I mean... That was it. Now, granted, was it a lot of flight time? Obviously yeah. not. But it was worth it. Yeah. It was 100% worth it. So I did Italy. I, my, it's funny. I was talking to my wife about... My wife. How about that term, bro? Mm. Shit. <laughs> but I was talking... We, I've never been out of the country like that before. I've been to Mexico, been to Canada. I've never gone over the pond, though. And I said, I want to go see cool shit after seeing this. I recommend the Mafi Coast, Positano, bro. It's beautiful. Mm. Capri. It's Fuck, it shits on Hawaii. Yeah. It's awesome. But in the Coliseum, it's crazy, bro. They keep lions and they their people are fighting. Do you know they had swim events there? Like they have water fountains on every level that like are just natural springs from the Alps. Like the shit's crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. No, and it's and no, it's, talk, it's it's like what was it, seven fifty BC? Four fifty yeah, BC? Yeah. That's before Christ. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy shit, bro. Still standing. <laughs> Still going. It's, cra- the, uh, it's the craziest thing for me about Italy. Food was delicious, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The buildings are so old and so beautiful with so much detail, and they're still in such crazy good condition. Yeah. And I'm not a traveling man. I'm a very simple human being. But at the same time, bro, like... That made you... Hey, man, that shit was lit. That shit <laughs> Makes you want to do a little, a little, a little more. more. I don't think I'm the type of guy where I want to go to all these places. And you know, mm-hmm. you know, my, my wife likes nice things, so we got to go into the Louis Vuittons and the fuck all that shit. Starts. Hey, let's pump the brakes here. <laughs> you know, let's get a couple more. Let's get a couple more sponsorships. Let's go. Let's, let's get a few more people to nah, use the code on uh, Manscape twenty yeah, percent off. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But it's cool but I want to see the pyramids that was my second thing I said because mm-hmm. that sh- that shit interests me bro yeah. how did they do it how I'm not gonna get on it here for conspiracy theories but let me just tell y'all as somebody who sat on the corner of one of the pyramids yeah no human did that bro <laughs> <laughs> Those blocks were huge, like longer than this table, bro. Yeah. Like this high off the ground, like no cranes. No, I know, yeah. I know. My theory is, if humans did do it, God hit the reset button. He said, "Nah, y'all too advanced. Let's start it over." Like that. Those are only that's, that's aliens, that's what you giants. Get. Reset button. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. And then they all like perfectly point no, to Orion's it? belt. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to go, with. but we got yeah. to go up in the pyramid, bro. Oh, you saw the whole thing, bro. We got uh, to. Yeah. I sat on. I sat on the pyramid, and then I climbed up in it. It was so cool, bro. It was a great trip. I think that everybody needs to take that trip in their lifetime. Yeah. Egypt. They were the blueprint for everything. Mm. That's crazy, bro. I everything. honestly. So wait, did you go Egypt, Italy, one trip? You, no, it was two separate things. Yeah, I went Italy, then Hawaii. Yeah. For like the this NFL PA trip, and mm-hmm. then got back from Hawaii five days later. Boom, traveling man. Went to Egypt. Got to squeeze them in. I, you I don't have it. a like. Life like is here for, yeah. life hey, is short. Here for a good time, not a long time. Not yeah. a long time. I get it. Cause you got to. Oh, I keep Charlie horse. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's Wait, there. Man, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> straightened out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. It, those were those were some like fire trips. I'm probably gonna do one more this off season. Don't know where. Birthday's in July. So I'll probably try to Birthday's do something. July? July 1st. Oh, yeah. You should know that. I start. Yeah. I I mean, you I'm July 19th. I ain't know that. I know it was about July. Mm-hmm. Right? Cancer baby. Yeah. Well, July 15th is uh, the Bring Juice boxing match. You, I'd love to celebrate you there. So. <laughs> Josh, if you come to VIP, unlimited, all you could drink, all you could eat, 20 bouts at a casino. 
That sounds dope. Could it be 21 me versus Jew? <sighs> No toothpick. No, no, no toothpick. weapons. No weapons. Sure. We're gonna, we're gonna tussle up one point. I was gonna, you know. Oh uh, well, shit. Yeah, man. we gotta go pay per view if we're gonna do it. <laughs> you know, the whole deal is the most. Your 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 saw the belts. You saw the belts. I saw. <laughs> you picked out your own belt. <laughs> I was just gonna say, dude, we picked out the whole belt, but Manscaped did them all better. <laughs> Be throwing in. If you about to be shaved from the eyebrows down. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hey, good. I need to hear from everybody on that. Yeah. Well, Jew, before I close it up, since you're my co-host, anything you want to say, Josh? Anything you want to say? Man, nah, I just appreciate my guy Woods uh, coming on the show. Man, you know this is this is my guy, college roommate Frank. You know, speaking about his Other. wife and everything. I was there. I was part of their whole process. Matchmaker whoa, whoa, Jew. Whoa. Matchmaker Not Jew. Matchmaker, Jew. But. Oh. She used to come over when they first were getting together. We used to drink these little seltzers. He used, to, <laughs> he used to come come hang out with us. In Big the booty mix. Big booty I was mix. third wheel for a lot of their first interactions. Nothing wrong so, with a tricycle. Know, Nothing wrong you know, with a tricycle. I had, to, I had to, We played all the drinking games. A lot of seltzers going. So you know, shout out to yeah. He has all the drinking games in the world. Let's, if you guys ever need a drinking you know, game, call Frank. Got that energy, bro. Yeah, he has a Big million juice. drinking games for sure. But yeah, just, you know, shout out to you, your wife. Congratulations on that. You know, I love seeing it from start to finish. And shout out to Woods. That's my guy, you know, one of the first dudes. When I was out in Detroit, you know, got with me, hung out with me outside the building and whatnot. We've been linked up ever since, you know, great dude. So just appreciate you taking your time out, coming in, doing this for me and my guy, Frank. So, yeah, no, I appreciate you, you guys know. for having me on. Appreciate oh, yeah. you extending the opportunity and you hey. for having this awesome platform. Wow. Josh? We're going to be sure to tag you in a bunch of shit, bro. Uh, have fun at that next trip. I hope Woodsy World and Bring the Juice could someday do a collab. Let oh, me know yeah. about that. Man. Let World. me know about that. Bring that the hot juice? shit. Oh, that hot know. shit. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, good luck to you guys this year, yeah. man. Seriously, no dude. Wish, wish you guys the best. God yes, in your sir. corner. I'll come out to a game. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, he'll be uh, AZ's here. good people. He's better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's going to be out here. For sure. Well, be sure to subscribe. Leave five stars. Get your piss hot. Follow Josh. Follow Juju. And, uh... Fire me up. Bring the juice this week, baby. Bring the fucking juice. <laughs> <laughs>